Fracture healing. The stability of the fracture decides what type of healing will occur. If there is a small amount of a strain, like below 2%, the primary bone healing will occur. As the case when you use compression plate. If the strain is between 2% to 10%, then secondary bone healing will occur, such as when you're using a cast, a rod, or external fixture. In the primary bone healing, you will need absolute stability. It's called haversion remodeling or cutting cone remodeling. Sometimes it's called intramembranous healing. The secondary bone healing will occur when the fixation is not rigid, such as a cast, and there will be endochondral ossification. With an IAM rod, you will have secondary bone healing. Early on, you will have preosteal callus, and later on, you will get medullary callus. The external fixture is predominantly preosteal callus with endochondral ossification because most of the time the external fixture is not very rigid. When the endochondral ossification fails because the fixation is inadequate, you get hypertrophic nonunion and you will have predominantly type 2 collagen. The endochondral ossification at this point has failed and the stability is needed in order to change the cartilage to bone. What are the stages of fracture healing? The stages are hematoma, inflammation, soft callus, hard callus, and remodeling. When the fracture occurs, there will be bleeding at the fracture site. It will make a fibrin blood clot. Then the stage of inflammation comes. The cells, the macrophages, the mesenchymal cells, the stem cells migrate to the fracture and form the granulation tissue and will release the growth factors. Granulation tissue tolerate the greatest strain before failure. COX-2 inhibitor and non steroidal depresses run X2, important for the differentiation of osteoblasts. Stage of soft callus. Soft callus occurs within two weeks. The amount of callus correlates with the immobilization. The stiffer the immobilization, the less amount of callus. Flexible fixation will result in endochondral ossification, abundant callus. Secondary bone healing, healing through cartilage formation. So the stability helps direct bone formation. Lack of stability helps the formation of cartilage, which later on can change to endochondral ossification. After the soft callus, you get hard callus. And the collagen change from predominantly type 2 to be followed by type 1. 1 is bone, 2 is cartilage. After the hard callus, there is remodeling. You need to know all the stages of bone healing because sometimes it comes in the exam. You need to know the order of bone healing. Blood flow at the fracture site is very important for fracture healing. The blood will supply the fracture with nutrient and cells. Initially, there is decreased blood flow at the fracture site which would increase later on, and the blood flow will peak at two weeks and return to normal after about three months. 
In distraction osteogenesis, you can get type 1 and type 2 cartilage, predominantly type 1 because there is more intramembranous ossification. The stage of remodeling will begin at two weeks and continue many years after the fracture has healed. The woven bone will be replaced by a stronger laminar bone and the fracture healing will be complete with the continuation of the medullary canal or medullary cavity. The remodeling of bone is influenced by the Wolf's Law, means the bone is affected by stress. How does the endochondral bone formation occur? The chondrocytes proliferate, then hypertrophied, then you get matrix mineralization. The chondrocytes die, and then you get vascular invasion, ossification, and remodeling to lamellar bone. What are the growth factors involved in fracture healing? The bone morphogenic protein. It is an osteoinductive causing the undifferentiated mesenchymal cells to differentiate into osteoblasts. And you have the transforming growth factor beta 1. You will make mesenchymal cell produce type 2 collagen and proteoglycans, trying to produce endochondral ossification. Insulin-like growth factor 2 will stimulate type 1 collagen. Platelet-derived growth factor, it will be released from the platelets and it attracts inflammatory cells to the fracture site, chemotactic.